today in this video I'm going to share with you some of the most common beginners runners mistake and how you can prevent them. Let's go! Hi, I'm Melanie the Physio, also the co-founder of Capital Physiotherapy here in Australia. Now before you begin, if you are a runner or is training to become a runner, don't forget to smash the like button down there because we will be showing a lot more video related to runners coming up in the very near future. <laughs> now the first mistake is being overly enthusiastic. Now not to dampen your enthusiasm but I see a lot of beginners runners making this mistake where they haven't been running at all in their life really and suddenly decide to run five times a week, six times a week, almost every day and that is a recipe for disaster. Now the first solution for this problem is to set yourself a long-term goal and then also a few short-term goals. Now the long-term goals can be something like running a half marathon or a full marathon by the end of this year, say for example. And then your short-term goal would be smaller achievable goal to get you to your long-term goals. Now remember, if you haven't been a runner before, slow and steady is the key to win the race. So you want to start off no more than three times a week, running a very short distance between one to three kilometers, and that is it. Then from there, slowly increase your running capacity based on what's comfortable for you and based on your own pace. Keeping in mind your long-term goal and then progress your short-term goal accordingly to it. You have to remember that this sport is new to your body too and you need to give them time to slowly adapt to this new change and what running is doing to your body. The second mistake that a lot of beginner runners make is to stretch before they run. Now there's a lot of misconception around when to actually do stretching while you're exercising. Although stretching is very important to help with the flexibility of your joint and muscles, the timing of when you do them is imperative. Doing them at the wrong time of your workout could have an opposite effect of what you're trying to achieve. Ideally, you really shouldn't be doing any form of long static stretches, that means long holding stretches right before your workout. The muscles aren't warmed up yet, so doing any static stretches before exercise is not going to help any form of injury prevention. There are actually more and more research out there that shows that static stretch right before workout could actually reduce the power, the strength and the speed of the muscle activation. So if you want to have a good run or you want to maximize the performance of your run, you really don't want to do long hold stretching right before your run. Now instead of doing holding stretches, try to change them to dynamic stretches instead. So dynamic stretches are stretches where you're just generically moving your entire body and your joint through movement and that actually have been proven to have increased effectiveness of muscle activation right before your workout. Therefore, before you run, a little bit of dynamic stretches is actually recommended and then after your run, that's when you do your static stretches. Now the third mistake that I see a lot of beginner runner makes is that they're overly focused on the performance of the run. They're overly focused on the speed or the distance of their run. Especially if you just started out running, don't overly focus on your distance and the speed and neglecting everything else. Not only can this limit you as a runner, but it can also leave the risk of developing and overuse injuries. So a lot of runners, they will only do running as the sole exercise and that's the only exercise they do. And that is why they end up being injured as a beginner runner. A lot of avid runners who have been running for a long time, you will know that they do strength and conditioning exercise outside running to help them improve their actual running skills. So do not, do not, I cannot say this enough, do not underestimate the power of conditioning exercise 
for your running. Now we do have a lot of videos that show some conditioning and strengthening exercise which I'll put a link up here that would help you improve the efficiency of your running and the quality of your running as well. So make sure you check them out after this video. Now the next beginner mistakes is not focusing on the route that you're taking and also the type of shoes you're wearing. Now the route that you take to run every day and the shoes that you wear every day does matters. For example, if you're running only on concrete surfaces all the time like the road path or any concrete fields, the impact of the force that's going straight to your joint and your muscle is very very high because the floor, the concrete floor would absorb almost close to no force at all. So what does that mean for your training? That means you would want to change up your running route on a regular basis to make sure that you're not exposing your joint to the same impact all the time. Similar principle applies to your shoes. Proper running shoes will help absorb more shock for you while running, which in turn will reduce the load on your joints. I also do encourage people to alternate between very supportive running shoes and also barefoot running shoes to change up the muscle that you use while running. That brings us to how often do we need to change your running shoes. Most of the good running shoes can let you run between the range of 500 to 750 kilometers, which I believe is about 300 to maybe 450 miles. Don't quote me on that. I do not know miles very well. However, if you're not sure, I encourage you to ask the shop person whom you buy the shoe from, how long can your specific running shoe last you before you need to replace a new one. A lot of avid runners that I treat in my clinic would change their shoe as regularly as every six months if needed because they have reached the kilometer that they need for that particular shoe. So even when the shoe actually looked pretty brand new, it's actually time for them to change because all the supportive structure would have been worn out once they reached the kilometer that the shoe is able to absorb. Now, running shoe in itself is a whole new topic that we can have a separate video and discuss hours and hours for. If you want to know more about running shoe or if you have questions about you and your running shoes, let me know down in the comment section down below. If I see enough of the same question, I might make a new video specifically for that topic. The next beginner mistake is disregarding how common people get injured from running. So a lot of beginners runners doesn't understand or doesn't grasp the concept that running is just like any other sport and injury from running is quite common. It's almost impossible to have your whole life of running journey if you are deciding that running is your sport and you're going to continue down this path that you never get injured at all. It's very highly unlikely. And the advice that I'm going to give you today is do not get discouraged or do not get scared of running just because you encounter some injuries throughout your running journey. I see so many beginners runners that started running, fall in love with running and then injured themselves that takes weeks and months to get better and after that injury, they completely get scared of the whole running sports as a whole so they don't push themselves very hard and some even just quit running altogether. So I'm here to advise a lot of beginners runner who is watching this video to let you realize that injury is part of the process and do not get scared or do not get put off by being injured. If you do have an injuries from running, make sure you take the time needed to properly rehab it and return to running at your own pace. Don't rush into doing the distance or the speed that you do pre-injury Instead, build up to it again. Never get fearful or discouraged from running because of these injury. When you're trying to learn a new sport, it is normal that you get injured as you're constantly trying to challenge your body to new physical limit. 
Therefore, instead of being scared, be proud of yourself. Be proud of all the achievement that you've achieved so far and try to push yourself just a little bit more each time to get better at this very fun spot. If you like this video and would like to learn more about running, make sure you head on to our private Facebook page at Ask Mel the Physio, and in there we'll have not only the PDF for this topic, but free PDF for every educational booklet that we will have from now onwards. Now today is a very special occasion and it is our Chinese Lunar New Year. So I would like to use this video to wish everyone who is celebrating this festive season a happy Chinese Lunar New Year. Once again, I'm Melanie and I will see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe, happy and healthy. See you in the next video.